So, hi, my name is Lisa Cox with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm a public affairs officer, and um, so I am peripherally involved in restoration projects, but basically, basically doing outreach for the restoration projects we do, informing the public, informing our congressionals and our elected officials, and then setting up public meetings, doing all that, doing the website, social media, all that that goes along with getting the word out. Um, so what we're looking at right here is a recently restored riparian restoration project. Uh, it was actually completed more in like 2012, 2013. Um, so what you're seeing now is about a five year growth of riparian forest and Lee Spells Varios are using the area. So it's almost a success until we get Lee Spells Varios breeding in here. Um, it's not quite a full success yet. They're a um, bird? Yes, it is an endangered bird. Um, mostly around Southern California and Arizona kind of area and a little bit in Baja. We have them on campus. Um, oh. Yeah, and also there too, yeah. So pretty, it's pretty wide ranging for a subspecies of Bell's Vireo. Um, it's a least Bell's Vireo, smallest one of the Bell's. Um, <laughs> and then, um, so that was like the, which you might call an umbrella species for this restoration project because if you provide old growth riparian forest habitat for Lee Spoles Vireo, pretty much everything else will be happy and thriving around it. It used to be farmland, so there was a lot of agriculture happening here by the Egger family, so that's why we call it the Egger Geo parcel. Um, so there are a exorbitant amount of um, um, PCBs and DDT and every kind of pesticide you can think of <laughs> it's in there and we've done a lot of soil core sampling on that so we know where the high density concentrated areas are and which ones aren't and one of the reasons why the next restoration project had to be changed was because of that was one of the reasons why we had to kind of move the project a little bit because of the high high concentrations of moving contaminated soil cost millions and millions of dollars and um, Usually when you put trees like this into the soil, eventually it metabolizes and breaks down over a long period of time, hopefully. <laughs> um, uh, except for the really persistent pesticides, you know, those are, we don't know how long that'll take to break down. Um, so this is, since I like meeting people here because you have a pretty elevated view of the refuge, as, as high as you're going to get. Um, in flat San Diego yes and um, so to the right is the salt works operation I'm sure you guys saw um, that's part of the refuge too it's within the refuge boundary and we actually lease the land through the state tidelands commission so um, we don't actually own the land we have a 66 year lease with them when we acquired the refuge in 1999 um, the solar salt ponds are still in operation as you can see there's trucks out there doing some scraping so it's used for industrial purposes. A hundred years ago, it was table salt. It was the cleanest salt you could get, and they called it that salty salt. And um, so it has a lot, long history of business being here. So each wildlife refuge has to go through a comprehensive conservation plan process. And that was decided in 1997 when the Refuge System Improvement Act was enacted. Each, each refuge has to go through a CCP. And so this refuge CCP was completed in 2006. And one of the plans for the refuge is to turn all those salt ponds back into salt marsh. And it was historically a lot of mud flat and intertidal and subtidal. There wasn't a lot of high marsh. So it was just, I mean, here in Southern California, um, we used to have a lot of mud flats. We used to have really expansive, as far as you could see, mud flats. Um, which sounds like a pretty useless habitat to us, but to birds, it is a smorgasbord of food for them when they're migrating from Peru or Antarctica or wherever they're migrating from. So um, even birds that get blown off course end up here. Like we had a Mongolian plover that showed up here once a couple Sweet. years ago. So um, so there's all that all those uses. So we're trying our best to return it back to the way it was realistically speaking we're not gonna get to the exact historical state that it was just because the land has changed so much so we can't totally go back in time but we can try and at least provide habitat for the endangered species that uh, for the reasons of why we're, we established this refuge in the first place so um, 
So besides the least spells Furio, you know, that's the riparian habitat. And then in the coast, you know, in the um, salt marsh habitat, we have the light footed ridgeways rail, uh, which its northern terminus ends at Point Magoo near your guys' school. Um, and the southern terminus of its range is in Baja. So, um, and then the California Clap Rail or the Ridgeways Rail, not the light footed one, is in San Francisco <laughs> Bay. So that's their range for that um, subspecies. Excuse me. So, um, so what I have here are the plans. So last week we finally made a record of decision, which means that we finally made a decision on our final EIS in which plan we wanted to pick. So there was four alternatives. Usually the first alternative is you don't do anything. Second alternative is usually the thing you wanna do. And the third and the fourth are usually um, ways around it in case something else doesn't work out. Um, and of course we got to pick our alternative B, which is the one that we wanted. Throughout the life of this project with Poseidon, it has transformed a lot. And the vision of this restoration project is to continue what we started here. So we're gonna have a transition. So we're gonna transition from riparian to coastal sage scrub and upland habitat and that down into intertidal, subtidal, mudflat habitat. So the point of this project over here is to connect with this one. So we're standing here right now. Um, and then this is the, we call it the River Partners Project because River Partners was the organization that did it. Um, I don't know if the, that name sounds familiar to you, but they're based out of Chico and they do uh, restoration projects for riparian areas all over the state um, it, using agricultural techniques. So they have a, when it starts growing, it looks like an orchard and then when it's done, it's a riparian forest. Cool. So yeah, so that's what this project was. And then this is the Poseidon project, we call it, or the Otai River Estuary Restoration Project. <laughs> A <laughs> so we just, <laughs> we just say the, Ota, the Poseidon project. Um, so they have to mitigate, right? They're killing marine life, sucking in the water. It's the desalination dying. plant. The desalination oh. plant. Carlsbad. Yeah, in Carlsbad, which you guys, I think you were trying to go yeah. see, but yeah, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Um, so they have to mitigate, right? And uh, calculating marine life, you know, <laughs> microscopic plankton and fish and it's really difficult to calculate so they had to really uh, try a different type of modeling and different types of science to really um, figure out what you could do to mitigate that because typically when you impact a wetland somewhere Coastal Commission comes up with a ratio usually four to one and then they can mitigate somewhere else in this case we don't have land that's being impacted right we don't have wetlands but we have wet <laughs> land or water productivity know, like, we have the ecological yes. productivity is getting flat. yeah and the fish and the marine life uh were it was just a new it was a new type of it's it's a fairly new type of uh mitigation that's happening on the coast and the carlsbad desal plant is one of those you know first ones to like really figure it out so this project's been in the planning stages since like 2007. Whoa. So That's their mitigation site in blue. Right yes, there? the blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. So the desal plants up in Carlsbad, they contacted us to do mitigation because we had intertidal habitat that needed restoring, and it was compatible with our comprehensive conservation plan. So since it lined up, we're like perfect, and we're not paying for it, right? They are. So I mean, we don't really have money to do restoration like this. This is going to be several million dollars. I don't know how much it's going to be. We don't have a number yet, but it's going to be really high. That's a good collaboration. Yes, yes, it is a good collaboration. Um, you know, it'd be nice if they could restore wetlands that are already urbanized. <laughs> like if there was like a development or a port, you know, like maybe we could remove the port and put wetlands back there. Um, that would be, in my opinion, more ideal because this is already protected. It's already land for wildlife. We could maybe return some back and get some real acreage put on the map, but we'll take it, right? <laughs> we can't afford to do no, it. This is still a salt pond here. Yeah, so those are all salt ponds over there. Um, the ocean, you kind of can't see. If you look, 
If you look towards Coronado over there, that's where the open bay is. But yeah, there's no outlet to the open ocean from here. Not until you get to downtown San Diego. Ponds, and there's green ponds. And some of them are like, they're called NACL ponds and then H HCL ponds or, or something. Huh. So there's different, there's a whole different, two different types of salt going on. Um, and then there's two different types of organisms that are living in there. So the red is like whatever red. We just walked doo, 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 doo. we just walked this little section right here okay and then this is pond 20 what I was talking about so this is to the southern terminus of the restoration project and this is actually owned by the port this is owned by the city of San Diego so um, different landowners different uses different potential future restoration possibilities but this just got voted on by the um, community and the port um, and there's a there's another uh, wetlands group that formed in South Bay over recent years to talk about stuff like this. And so in the future, as the port does any sort of project, um, they can mitigate for that by turning Pond 20 back into an intertidal wetland. Right now, it's just like a bunch of salt flats. And it does flood. Every single time there's a high king tide or a rain or whatever, it floods. So it doesn't look like a good place to develop. So they decided that mitigation would be best, which is a good decision. <laughs> salt pond restoration project because they're the westernmost ponds of the salt pond area and this uh, is the first breach that we did um, in order to open these ponds up to the bay um, and the Otai River this is where the old Thai gate was um, and this is the Otai River right in the foreground yes right. that is the Otai River channel but it's as you can see highly tidal and mostly ocean water um, out in the distance you can see that there's actual core grass and everything that it was not all planted that was natural recruitment so we did do we did like 40,000 plugs of um, salt marsh plants in here but a lot of them didn't make it and a lot of them died but over the years we've really seen a lot of self-propagation happening and we really haven't touched it um, but we do have monitors that have been going in there and monitoring for fish species so um, and different benthic macroinvertebrates and stuff so um, so that was a five year and it was extended, um, uh, sorry, monitoring, yeah, monitoring oh, yeah. program, yeah. Post so it was five years post-construction monitoring plan. Right. And then I think we extended it because with our partnership with the Tijuana Estuary, they have a very robust research team there. And so we contracted them to do, um, a lot of the monitoring. Cool. Yeah. So this is what we hope. The rest of these salt ponds will look like in the future. So it'll be from that to that. And 
hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm thinking when we get all these salt ponds restored, which may be in several decades, um, I'm thinking the clapper rail will be in a really good spot. Um, because when you add this kind of acreage compared to what they had before, um, I mean, I, they could probably might even be able to be downlisted. 